If you want to use it and risk getting banned, be my guest. Up to you. The new ping plugin? I have seen the new ping plugin. What is there to say about the new ping plugin? I mean, I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to get banned. I'm not going to get banned for that thing. To, for using that thing. What tool? There's a tool that artificially reduces your ping. There's a tool that tricks the game into thinking you have lower ping, which allows you to double weave at any ping. So like the question is like, why is double weaving affected by ping in the first place? So for those who don't know, this is a TLDR because I'm not like super familiar with it. But basically the way ping works in this game. So at zero seconds, you press mug. Now, there is an initial 500 millisecond lock on every off GCD. Just always. There's just a, fi a 500 millisecond lock on every off GCD. Every action, I mean, some have more, like jump has longer. But like, your standard off GCD will have a 500, or a half second uh, animation locks. That's why you can't like quintuple weave if you're if you're living in the server because you, you're still forced to have this half second lock after every action. Now, um, but the problem is, so let's say you have 50 milliseconds of ping. So what happens is you send that at zero seconds you use mug, and then your client says, okay, from zero from zero milliseconds to 500 milliseconds, you are locked because you use mug. Sure. At 50 milliseconds, right, 50 ping, then the server receives your action that you use mug, and the server validates your action. The server says, okay, we recognize that the client used mug, and, you know, provided you're not cheating or doing anything weird, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a valid action. Then it sends the, that validation back to the client. 50 milliseconds more because your ping's 50. So at 100 milliseconds, your client receives that validation, and it says, okay, great. Uh, the use of mug was validated. Then it resets action lock back to zero. So you, you need another full 500 milliseconds before you can do an action. So instead of being able to do actions 500 milliseconds after you used mug, it you have to wait until 600 milliseconds after you use mug because you have to wait for the round trip of you telling the server that you're using the action and the server validating that action. That takes 100 milliseconds then the 500 millisecond lock resets. So if your ping is really high, let's say your ping is 200 milliseconds, then that round trip takes 400 milliseconds, for example, then you have to wait an extra 0.4 seconds more than someone who has zero ping um, because you have to wait for that round trip. Um, that's like the very, very, very TLDR of how it works. You see why that's a problem, right? And what this tool does, what it does is it subtracts the round trip time from the animation. So let's say your round trip was 400 milliseconds. This tool says, okay, well, we've already been locked for 400 milliseconds because it, it locks you before, like right when you send the message, right when you start the round trip. So you, you've been locked for the 400 milliseconds of the round trip. And then, it, so it knows you've been locked for 400 milliseconds already. And then it says, okay, well then you should only be locked for 100 milliseconds more. And that is like effectively what playing the game is like on zero ping is like, that's how the game would perform. Uh, or near zero ping, right? If, you, if you're at 10 ping, you go from 500 milliseconds of lock to 520 seconds milliseconds of, 520 milliseconds of lock, which is a very, very small increase compared to someone who has like 200 ping, which is 900 milliseconds of lock, right? So like, it's very clear, like it's tricking the game. That's cheating, right? We're, we're editing the game. At the same time, why doesn't the game account for your ping for the animation lock in the first place, right? That's like the actual question. Why doesn't the game do that? Because the thing is, if the game did that, you should you would be able to double weave or like weave normally, play the game effectively. Uh, you would basically be able to weave, uh, double weave or like single weave on machinists, for example. But you basically be able to do like a perfect rotation, player skill uh, withstanding. You'd be able to do a perfect rotation on any data center, no matter where you live. Of course, you might run into issues with latency from other things, right? You might, like, not be able to dodge things and stuff like that. But that fixes the whole uh, rotational issue, which is honestly a bigger issue. That's the biggest issue with, with, with ping, is being able to do your rotation properly. This is more of a tool for, like, good players, I think. I don't think it will change anything for, like, bad players, to be honest. A bad player probably isn't double weeping or rolling their GCD anyway. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for them. 
This is strictly a tool for like people who want to like uh, maximize their gameplay. Okay, I'm not gonna say whether or not that's cheating. If if you make it give you artificially low ping, I'm not gonna get into an argument over whether or not that's cheating. But it is by far the closest thing to cheating that um, I think people are considering using. Right? Everything else people use is like ACT and stuff like that. They're, they those are third-party tools that simply read memory and then do stuff with it, right? And then, like, mods or, or like, you know, um, glam mods or whatever. But, like, this is actually editing how the game performs, I think, which is very... That's, like, a, that's just, like, crossing this line. Obviously, all the line is very gray. It's very blurred. But it is crossing some sort of line of, like, we are now doing more than just reading from memory. I'm not arguing whether CACBOT is cheating or not, but CACBOT is just reading memory. This plugin is editing your game. Like, it's not just reading, it's like writing, if, if that makes sense. It changes how your client communicates with the server. So like, I don't, I'm not arguing on what people's opinions on what is or isn't cheating. I'm just saying this does more to game modification, which is like the basis of cheating or like, illegal conduct like against TOS stuff I think like whether or not you consider cheating depending on your definition of cheating this is something that more egregiously crosses the TOS like this is a more egregious breach of TOS than something like CACBOT even if CACBOT gives you a bigger advantage that's up for you to decide but even if you believe so I'm talking about like from a Square Enix perspective of what they will ban um, this is like a big deal yeah, uh, you could totally get caught and you can get banned for it. Um, it's just it's just risky. Now, I'm actually not convinced that they'll be rolling out bans for this simply because Square Enix just very rarely bans. Like, what do they ban for ever other than like being mean to people? <laughs> That's usually like, I don't know. We've never really seen people get banned unless they are mean. Uh, Paisley, no, people did not get banned for Paisley. Help like the world first team for T use Paisley Park very obviously on their clear VOD, right? And they didn't get banned. So like I'm not saying they should get banned, but if there was one person or group to get banned for using Paisley Park, it would be them. And they weren't, right? So Ungar Max is the only thing. But Ungar Max is like an in-game exploit, which is like a little different. What's Ungar Max? Ungar Max was a thing in patch 4.2 or 4.3. It was during Sigma Scape. Basically, there's like this buff. I think it was in Palace or in Heaven on High. Oh, it's from Squadrons. Yeah. It's from, and it basically like, it's a huge buff. It's like an echo buff. But you could like, um, you could abuse this exploit to give you the buff uh, anywhere else. So you could like go into raids with the buff. You basically get a free echo. And just like destroy everything. Um, or was it like an LB? I don't remember exactly how it worked, but yeah, basically you got like an Echo style benefit, like wherever you wanted. Or it was LB1, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't remember the exact, but basically, yeah. It was like you got a pretty large gain. Um, and then they were like, yeah, that is bad. Um, but there was like a whole thing of like some people got banned, some people, like some people got temp banned for 14 days, some people got temp banned for two days, some people uh, didn't get banned. Um, it was a big deal because what the way it worked was that people figured it out and then what happens when people learn that Ungar Max is a thing, right? That you can get this buff. People just try it. Not to clear things, but because like people I know that like have cleared Uwu before, like or had already cleared stuff, they just wanted to see if they like what happens if they get if they get Ungar Max. They just wanted to see. Like there's this level of curiosity, right? That just happens. And uh, so it was like this weird situation where Square Enix had to like um, determine the level of like uh, how much of like how TOS breaking you were. Like if you were the type of person who, let's say, were like doing it to clear content versus doing it out of curiosity, etc. Because like the people who did it out of curiosity would like get warnings or like one day ban, right? But like the people who use it to like clear UU for the first time would get like a, a 14 day ban or something. I don't really remember. I, I didn't use it. I never used it. How does it help you clear anything? I mean, like, 50% more damage is a lot more damage. That is, like, an insane amount of damage. 
The if I remember correctly, this like the speed kills. I remember people were doing it in 06, and like the speed kills were like insane because you know you just killed things really fast. The the thing about Unger Max was that like it didn't seem like there was any sort of consistency with how they handled. Like there was a there was like consistency in that in that like they're definitely trying to like give big punishments to people who abused it and smaller punishments for people who just like were interested in like seeing what it would do. The problem is like I they were it seems like they were unable to clearly identify which people were which. So that was the problem. I think inject driver seen the effects is like one of those things if you don't run it you're never gonna be on an even playing field. That's true honk. I think the argument for having everyone run it is or having it be legal is that like it actually puts everyone on an even playing field because people already are on, on an uneven playing field when it comes to ping, right? If you live on the East Coast, if you live, I mean, you like from New Zealand stuff. So like, uh, it's actually more of an equalizer than it is like a cheat. Although, although it's only an equalizer in the, in, in the sense of like, if I remember correctly, you can actually like cheat it so it means you have zero ping, which is like higher than anyone actually practically has, right? It just makes it, it makes that consideration more difficult simply just because Square Enix's netcode is so bad. Like, if Square Enix just had function, functional netcode, then we can just say, oh yeah, this is a cheat, no one needs this, like, this is cheating, and then just wipe our hands clean of it. But because their netcode is so freaking terrible, we have to have this consideration. I don't know. It's, like, really dumb. I think there's, like, validity, though, to, like, it, it letting people play at higher levels of ping like on different data centers if they want to. So for example, stall on Q, right? Or playing on NA, and they have 180 ping. They can't double weave, not anymore. They used to be able to double weave, but not anymore. And it's kind of like, if they had that plugin, then they'd just be able to play fine on our data center. Yeah, sure, dodging is slightly harder, but like, that's like their choice to make, if that makes sense. It's not that big of a deal, whereas like the double weave thing is a really big deal. And it's like, really sucks that like, there clearly exists a way to make that less problematic, but Square Enix just like, doesn't fix it. Yeah, and then some jobs are unplayable at higher ping. Machinist is the most obvious one. I don't even know like what ping you need to play Machinist. There's a reason why I'm leveling Black Mage on JP right now. I was like, if I want to play a job on higher ping, Black Mage is the way to go. If we're talking from a practical point of view, I'm 100% saying you should not use this tool because it is like way too risky. You might get yourself banned or use at your own risk, I guess. If you want to use it and risk getting banned, be my guest. Up to you. But it's risky. It's very risky. Um, so I personally, I'm not going to use it. Although I live in California, so it's not like I need to use it anyway. You can like almost triple weave. It's not possible, but you can get really close. What's Square Enix going to do? What do we all think Square Enix is going to do about it, right? You might hope, hey, maybe they'll fix it. Maybe they'll get rid of the tool by fixing the netcode. And then we won't need the tool anymore, right? That's what, that's what you would, that's what you would hope for. But I think any veterans of the game would know that they'll probably just ban the tool and then just be like, yep, that's it. The thing about F, like, when you say FF logs, you're gonna have to filter this, I disagree. Because like, what's the difference? Like, the problem is, what's the difference between a player using that tool and a player who lives in California? Practically is no difference. This tool, what it does, from the most basic perspective, what this tool does, it's basically, if you live in the United States, it simulates as though you live in California. That's it. That's all it does. It lets you play as though you live in California, connected to the United States servers, no matter where you live in the world, as far as doing actions goes. Dodging is still a little different, but as far as like doing your rotation on a dummy, it is equivalent as though you live next to the server. That's all it does. It's not like you're getting... It's not like you're getting an advantage that other players don't have, to some extent. Like, I naturally have this by virtue of the fact that I live in California. I have no incentive to use this tool because what I have on a day-to-day -day basis is already as good as what this tool would give me anyway. It's not like you're getting an unnatural benefit, like a, a benefit that no one else has. Now, again, I'm not saying that makes it okay, but I'm just explaining what the tool does. Does that mean that you can use this injection, this this ping tool, with no restriction, or rather, with no risk? Of course not. 
I think it's risky. Very risky to use it. But, I mean, technically, the evidence shows that uh, they don't ban very often for it. Which job def uh, influenced the most by hacks? Uh, Summoner and Black Mage are usually the two. Black Mage only gets the GCD hack, but Black Mage is like... The reason why I say it is because that's a really big deal on Black Mage, right? Reducing your GCD on Black Mage is humongous, given that like that's what Black Mage is all about, giving it many Fire Fours out there. The Summoner hack is insane. This is uh, a, like Bacon Stormblood. There was a hack where uh, you basically had infinite Rune 4 charges. So I don't remember how strong Rune 4 was back then, but uh, yeah, you could do like 6k DPS on Summoner and UCOB. Which might not sound like a lot right now, given how overpowered jobs were. But back then, it was a big deal. Like, I don't remember how much damage jobs did back then, but it was a lot. It was probably, like, at least 25% more than what you would normally do, if not more than that. Movement speed hack is one that's very common. I see people use it a lot. I don't know about it anymore, but I know a lot of people used to use it and, like, never have anyone got banned for that. There's a hack... I mean, Zoom Hack is like the very obvious one that everyone knows and people just stream with it all the time. And I, people just don't care about it, I guess. But Zoom Hack uh, allows you to zoom out your camera as far as you want, which is a pretty big deal for progression in my opinion. Aren't there bots for doing optimized rotations? There are, but those are not hacks, right? Bot, the, the, way the, bot, the way the hacks work is that they like edit your game files or, or rather they like, how do I describe it? It like edits how, it changes like how your client talks to the server, I would say. The bots are like just um, simulating player input. There are bots and bots are like, that's a whole other problem. But again, I would say that's a different problem. It's still a problem, but it's a different problem. I don't know of any samurai hacks. The only thing I know that samurais have is Tensor Weave, which is the um, the bot that performs your rotation for you. That's the only thing I know. Limiting the zoom on your camera is dumb. I mean, regardless of whether or not you think it's dumb, it's literally an unfair advantage you get if you uh, zoom hack, so. It's cheating, in my opinion. It's not like they're gonna let you zoom out your camera as far as you want. You might argue that the zoom is like too small, but I would argue that the 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 amount you can zoom is like part of the game mechanics, and that like mechanics are designed in specific ways um, around that. I think the most obvious one is like brute justice in A8S. It's designed in a way that like the VFX obscure your vision, so you can't tell who's being targeted by Mega Beam. So you're supposed to, like, bait Mega Beam in such a way that, like, regardless of who's being targeted, you know where a safe spot is. Because of, like, your ca like how your camera can't see everything. If you could zoom hack and you can just see from above where he's targeting, that would uh, invalidate the mechanic. I would argue that uh, your, your zoom is part of, like, how the mechanics are designed. But, of course, ultra-wise giving you advantage is really stupid. So there's that whole other problem. Ultra rides are broken. Well, the thing about ultra rides is that if you wanna, if you want the ultra ride advantage, all you have to do is change your game's resolution. You don't even need an ultra ride. You can, you can just simulate it by changing your game's resolution. So like, it's not, it's like technically an advantage for people who have ultra rides, but that's like the same realm as like my monitor is bigger than yours. If you want the ultra ride resolution, you can set your monitor to have that ultra ride resolution if you really want to. There's nothing stopping you. So like if the bottom, the staircase is on my left and this rock is on my right. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong actually, let's see. Yeah, look, I can't even see to the left of the staircase anymore. You see that? Like I, I just lost the whole staircase on my left, the left side of my screen by switching my resolution back to back to borderless windowed. You can simulate it if you want to. Ultra wide. It seems that no one wants to, which, you know. I understand. Anyone can get that advantage if you really, really want that advantage. Anyone can go for it. Nothing is stopping you except for your own preference of what your game would look like. Nothing else is stopping you.